Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. Question eight, which is a 50 mark question on probability, statistics, and data. So part A of the question tells us that in a lottery, 45 balls numbered one to 45 are placed in a machine and six of them are drawn randomly. So if the six numbers drawn match the numbers that a player had chosen, the player wins a million euro. If multiple players have the six winning numbers, then they each receive one million euro. So in this lottery, the order in which the numbers are drawn does not matter. So then A part one is worth 10 marks. And it's asking us to compute the probability that a player wins a million euro prize by purchasing a single lottery ticket. So basically what we have to do here is we have to work out the number of ways of selecting six numbers from 45. So all the different ways that we could select the six numbers. And then if they select one lottery ticket, then they've won in whatever that number is chance of winning. So there's 45 options and you choose six. So we're gonna do 45, choose six, and we can do this on our calculator. So 45, shift, and then the division button to get the NCR, and then six. And that means that there's 8,145,060 different ways of selecting six numbers from 45 which means the probability that a player will win 1 million euro by purchasing a single lotto ticket is going to be 1 over 8,145,060. So obviously it's a very small chance there that the player will win the lotto buying just one single ticket. So now we're going to have a look at A part 2 and this is also worth 10 marks. So here we're told that if 5 of the 6 numbers drawn match the numbers that a player has chosen, the player wins second prize of 2,000 euro. So now we're asked to find the probability that the player wins the second prize by purchasing a single lottery ticket. So basically we're asked to find the probability that they match five of the six numbers. So we're going to have to find all the ways that out of six numbers, they're going to choose five and then multiply that by the probability that of the other 39 numbers, they choose one and then divide by the total amount of possibilities, which we worked out in A part one. And that's 45 choose six. And we know that 45 choose six is 8,145,060. So now let's work out six choose five and 39 choose one. So six choose five is six and 39 choose one is 39. So it's six by 39 over 8,145,060. And we can do this on our calculator. So it's 234 divided by 8145060. So 39 over 1357510. So that's the probability the player wins the second prize by purchasing a single lottery ticket. Again, extremely unlikely, but slightly more likely than winning it. So now we're going to have a look at a part three, and this is worth five marks. So we're told that a single lottery ticket costs two euro, and the only two options when playing are you win top prize of a million euro, second prize of 2000 euro, or you don't win anything. So now we're asked to find the expected value when playing the lottery. So the expected value here is equal to the payout, the possible payout minus the cost. However, with the payout, we have to take into account the probability of winning that specific amount of money. So to work out the payout, we're going to multiply the amount of money that you can win by the probability of winning that amount, and then plus that with all the different possibilities. So it's going to be 1 million by 1 over 8145060, and we're going to plus with that 2000 by 39 over 1,357,510. So let's do this on the calculator now. So a million times by 1 over 8145060 plus 2000 by 39 over 1357510 that's equal to 0 0.180231943, but I'm going to round this to two decimal places, so that's going to be equal to 0 0.18. Now we know that a ticket costs two euro, so therefore the expected value is going to be 0 0.18 minus two, and that's equal to minus 182 euro. So when you play for two euro every time, you can expect to lose one euro and 82 cent. So that's our answer for a part three, and now we're going to have a look at a part four. So a part four tells us that on a bank holiday weekend, each of the top prices are doubled to two million euro, as a result, a lot more people buy tickets that weekend. So then Raymond thinks there is no point in buying a ticket that weekend as the odds of winning a top prize will be much less. So we're asked now if we agree with Raymond and we have to give a reason for our answer. So we don't agree with Raymond as it's a lotto, not a raffle. So the odds of winning are the exact same no matter how many people play. Whereas in a raffle, the more people that play, the less likely that each individual person is to win as obviously there's more chances that someone else will win, the more people that play. So we do not agree that the lotto is not a raffle. The odds of winning a top prize are the same. It doesn't matter how many people buy tickets. So that's our answer now for A part four. So now we're going to move on to part B of the question. So part B tells us that the National Lottery claims that 42% of adults in Ireland play the lotto every week. A competitor lottery company wants to test this claim. So B part one is worth 15 marks. And it says that they surveyed 1,000 people at random and found that 408 of them play the National Lottery every week. So now we're asked to use this information to test the National Lottery's claim at a 5% level of significance, clearly stating the null and alternative hypothesis. 
So the first thing to do is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. Then we're going to work out our margin of error. And from that margin of error, we're going to create a 95% confidence interval. And based on that, we can reach our conclusion whether we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis. So as I said, we're going to state our null and alternative hypothesis first. So the null is going to be that the percentage of adults who play the lotto every week is 42%. So basically that P is equal to 42%. And the alternative is going to be that the percentage of adults who play the lotto every week is not 42%. So in other words, P is not equal to 0.42 or P is not equal to 42%. So now we've been given a sample of a thousand people and 480 of them play the lotto every week. So from that, we're going to find our sample proportion estimate. So that's going to be given as P hat. So P hat is going to be equal to 408 over a thousand. And we're going to use that now in creating our margin of error. So we're going to use this formula here, the standard error of the proportion. That's the square root of P times by one minus P over N. And then P here is going to be 408 over 1000 or 0 0.2. 408. So the square root of 0 0.408 times by 1 minus 0 0.408 over 1000. And we're going to multiply that by that 1.96. As remember, it's at a 5% confidence level. So at a 5% confidence level, we're going to multiply that by 1.96. So we can pop this into the calculator now. That's equal to 0 0.03046119987. So then to construct the confidence interval, we're going to do p hat plus that and then p hat minus that. And that will give us our interval. So remember, p hat is 0 0.4. 408. So p hat minus 0 0.03046119987 is going to be equal to 0 0.3775. And then p hat plus that number is going to be 0 0.4385. But then when we add p hat with 0 0.03046119987, we get 0 0.4385 correct to four decimal places, which means p lies between 37.75% and 43.85%. So 42% falls within this confidence interval. So therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis or H0. So that is our conclusion to the question B part one. So now we're gonna have a look at B part two, and this is worth five marks. So we're told people were selected by a process of stratified sampling. So now we have to explain what stratified sampling is. So stratified sampling is when the population is divided up into mutually exclusive and exhaustive subgroups called strata. So mutually exclusive basically means that they cannot be in two at the same time. Each element of the population belongs to exactly one stratum, which it is believed will respond differently from each other. Those selected from each stratum are merged to form a single sample and that's exactly what stratified sampling is. So now we're going to move on to B part 3 which is the final part of the question and it's worth 5 marks. So this says that if the company had surveyed 4,000 people instead of 1,000 while the proportion of people who played the lotto stayed the same how would the margin of error for the hypothesis test have been affected and we have to justify our answer. So basically p hat is the exact same so p hat is still 0 0.408 but n is now 4,000 rather than 1,000. So we're going to have to compare this with the margin of error that we got in a part 1 and this margin of error was 0.03046119987. So it's going to be 1.96 by the square root of 0.408 times by 1 minus 0.408 over 4000. So we can evaluate this now on our calculator. So that gives us 0.015230599994. So that's the margin of error with the sample size of 4000. The margin of error with the sample size of 1000 was 0.03046119987. So basically, the margin of error has has halved. So basically when you increase the sample size from 1000 to 4000 the margin of error halves. So that's our answer for B part 3, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.